Okay, why not you said before? Put it last time? Yeah, why not you said before? Because if you said me before, I can make a stand for you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Gyanati Rajasya Gyanjara Shakaya Chakshurupanita Mayaram Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaha Mishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Mishnu so, thank you for coming, all of you. I'm uh, uh, thankful that you are here, that you give me the opportunity to speak Bhagavatam, to serve the, the Lord. And uh, I'm seeking for the blessings. Bestow, bestow it them on me to be able to say something bona fide and uh, artificial. So today I'm presenting the section of uh, Brahma. When he was last time with Brahma, when he was uh, born out of the lotus flower. So in the chapter eight, we find how this. Lotus came out from the navy of uh, Lord Vishnu and uh, in the world of the flower was Brahma was manifested, the first living being. So at that time he, uh, he didn't know anything, he was confused, he didn't know who he is, what's going on. So he, he tried to figure out things, he started going down on the stem to look the, for some clue for the bridgings of the stem and uh, at one point he becomes scared from the waves of the ocean and he decided to come back to the, uh, to the flower, to the lotus and then he, at, at one point he heard one voice saying tapa so he understood he has to undergo some penance and some meditation so he started meditating and he meditated for a long time, very long time and uh, once the Lord was satisfied and he gave him a darshan, so he manifested himself in front of Brahma. And uh, Brahma started offering prayers to him, and uh, various prayers. And in this section, in the ninth chapter, in, I, will, I will be giving now the, the verse 33 of the ninth chapter. So Brahma, he, he prayed for empowerment, protection, for saving him from deviating while he's creating the, the world, the modes, uh, engaging in, in, in the modes and so on. So the Lord replied to him at once. He said, be relaxed, don't worry, you have my blessings, be pacified. And then in this text he, 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 he tells him that uh, when he's free from the conceptions of gross and subtle bodies, to realize his uh, eternal nature, the uh, true, the uh, Svarup. So, I'll read the text now once, you just go through it and start reading something. What's the text? 33, 9 the chapter. Yadara hitam atmanam mutendriya gunashaya i svarupena mayopetam pasyam svarajam richati. Synonyms. Yada, when, ragitam, freed from. Atmana, self, Buddha, material elements, Indriya, material senses, Guna Ashaye, under the influence of the material mode of nature, Svarupena, in pure existence, Maya, by me, Upetem, approaching, was Pashyam, by seeing, Svarajyam, spiritual kingdom, Richity, enjoy. Translation When you are free from the conception of gross and subtle bodies, and where your senses are free from all influences of the mode of material nature, you realize your pure form in my association. At that time, you will be situated with pure consciousness. Purpled by His Divine Grace, a issue of Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupada. In the Bhaktivedan Samrita symbol, it is said that a person whose only desire is to render transcendental loving service to the Lord is a free person in any condition of material existence. 
that service that it used is this Farouk, our real form of the living entity. Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Chaitanya Church Tamrita also confirms this statement by declaring that the real spiritual form of the living entity is eternal servitorship to the Lord, to the Supreme Lord. The Mayavada school shudders and totters a service attitude in the living entity, not knowing that the transcendental world, the service of the Lord is based on transcendental love. Transcendental loving service is never to be compared to the fourth service of the material world. In the material world, even if one is under the conceptions that he is not no one's servant, he is still, he is still the servant of his senses under the dictation of the material modes. Actually, no one is master here in the material world, and therefore the servants of the senses have very bad experience of servitude. They shudder at the thought of service because they have no knowledge of the transcendental position. In transcendental loving service, the servitor is as free as the Lord. The Lord is para, or fully independent, and the servant is also fully independent, or spara. In the spiritual atmosphere, because there is no forced service. Uh, there, the transcendental loving service is due to spontaneous love. A reflected glimpse of such service is experienced in the service of the mother unto the son, the friend service unto the friend, or the wife service unto the husband. These reflections of service by friends, parents, or wives are not forced, but are due on to love. Here in this material world, however, the loving service is only a reflection. The real service, or service in Sparu, is present in the transcendental world in association with the Lord. The very same service in uh, transcendental love can be practiced in, in devotion here. This verse is also applicable to the Gyanis who, the enlightened Gyani, when free from material contaminations, namely the gross receptor bodies, together with the senses of the material modes of nature, is placed in the Supreme and is thus liberated from material bondage. The Gyanis and the devotees are actually in agreement up to the point of liberation from material contamination. But whereas the Gyanis remain pacified in the platform of simple understanding, the devotees develop further spiritual advancement in loving service. The devotees <coughs> develop a spiritual individuality in their, their spontaneous service, which is enhanced on and on up to the point of Madhurya Ras, or transcendental loving service, reciprocated between the lower and the lower. <coughs> so we see here uh, the Lord speaking to Brahma that he has to be free from all material designations even though now he has received his, his first body, is the first living entity in the universe, such a powerful uh, living being, and still he has to perform this duty, and uh, at once has to give up the material conceptions. So we find here in the verse, the Lord says, Ragitam, free from, Atmanam, self, Buddha, material, elements, Indriya, material senses, Una actually under influence of the three modes of material nature. So uh, this is, as we know, a, the ABC of spiritual knowledge, the first steps, understanding uh, the basics that we are not uh, material, the difference between spirit and matter. So uh, we find in the Bhagavad Gita, the famous verse 2.13, which says, that the embodied soul uh, passes from youth, from, uh, from boyhood to youth to old age, and the soul similarly passes to another body at death. And the sober person, the Lira, is not viewed by such change. So, we see that uh, this conception is very clear for the uh, Eastern traditions, for the Eastern countries like uh, Buddhist Buddhists, and, uh, the Vedic uh, ideologies following the Vedic civilization, all these uh, traditions from uh, from here. But in the West, this is not so so common. In fact, the, all the Abrahamic religions like Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Islam, they are they're not accepting uh, reincarnation, and people are very very ignorant about this and very grossly attached into material life. And uh, but we find that in the Vedic uh, philosophy, the Upanishads are explaining that 
there is reincarnation and uh, there is a, this cycle of birth and death, samsara and uh, not only that, but that it's a, it's a painful, it's a very painful and suffering process and we have to get out of it. And we have a very nice example by Prabhupada, which exemplifies nicely this process, like changing dress, changing the dress of, uh, of the body, the body is like a dress, no? So, uh, like, when uh, the body is no longer of any use, use when the dress is no, no longer of any use, when it's torn and broken, uh, we throw it away, so the, the body throws away the body, the soul throws away the body and accepts uh, a new, new one. <coughs> so, this is the basic understanding and also, at that there is a very, very great pain, pain. It's very unpleasant experience, and uh, there is a, a big uncertainty what will be the next body, which will be de determined by our previous activities, karma, and our consciousness that we have. So basically, uh, we can get uh, a dog's body, or a human body, that's a good deal, you know? or, but, but we can degrade even more, we can get worm's body, or even worse, we can go to hell. So it's a very risky process. So the Vedic uh, philosophy is teaching us we have to get out of it. So the soul accepts a new body in this way, being injected into another mother's womb by the semen of the father. Then uh, he starts to evolve into the embryo, the embryo evolves. And uh, the baby at once becomes conscious and uh, he's uh, we find in the 31st chapter of the third canto, Kapiwana is explaining the miseries of the baby. He's swimming in, in a urine, the, uh, the worms are biting him, and at once he, he, he can remember by the grace of the Lord that uh, his, his, his past, uh, past lives, so he prays to the Lord, Oh my Lord, this time I will. I will come back to you, I will never get entangled anymore, please help me, and so on. But then when he's born, he feels great agony. He's once again put out into this miserable world, and he forgets everything, and his material activities continue right where he left. So, we have a very nice example of this with uh, Bharat Maharaj in the, in the Bhagavatam. How he, he achieved like a very uh, exalted position of uh, our Bhakti. But still, uh, while he was in the forest, he got attracted to this baby deer who was abandoned by his, his mother. And he took it to take care of it. And he started developing affection for it. And uh, he took it to his bhajan deer, he started feeding him, giving him water, and so on. And up to the point that at, at once he started to neglect his spiritual practices and started giving more importance to this, uh, this baby deer. And then, at once, he, he left his body and he, re he remembered the deer. So he got the deer's body. But he was fortunate because, because, of, sorry, because of his uh, uh, exalted position, he was able to remember his past life. So he was a deer, but he was remembering his past life and everything. So he decided, okay, now I have to be careful. So he went near a Bajan Kutir of Sages and he was presiding nearby, listening to the chanting of the mantras, the holy names. So when he, he left that body, he attained Jada Bharat, the next one, the famous Brahma. And then there he decided, okay, this life, again, I will, I will do it nicely. So he decided to appear like crazy, he didn't speak with anyone. He, he failed to be there and, and everything, he didn't under, undertake Brahmana training and so on. So this is a very nice example for us. And uh, as I said, people today are very blind to this spiritual knowledge, these basic things, and are in complete need of it in order to become peaceful and happy. To overcome the fear of death is very important because uh, it's taking all of our joy. So, Basically, we, we have to abandon this kind of modern lifestyle uh, which is artificial, like these industries which Prabhupada compared them as um, hellish 
as contingents of the demons. And uh, this is bringing so much grief and making us absorb into this materialistic life of sanctification more and more, keeping us in, in the complexities of, of the material world. And uh, so we, we find, especially in the West, uh, people who are so much uh, engrossed, they are so lusty, they turn no enemy in the soul, you know, it's, it's lust. So there is so much sense gratification, there is watching of TV, computer games, gadgets, all kind of intoxicants, people are taking drugs. And you go to the department store, there are first two types of biscuits, ice creams, and this and that, sweets, and so many things, you know, which are useless, completely useless for the real purpose of, of human life. So this lust is like a blazing fire, we find this very nice example. The more you put fuel in it, the more you go to sense gratification, and the more the fire is expanding and burning from the inside. So, in my humble experience, I, I also got uh, some taste from this bitter kind of lifestyle. When I was uh, in my youth, I got really exhausted, depressed by all this, and I, I said to myself, there must be something more to life than just eating, sleeping, uh, working, and then dying, you know? So I decided to make, make a research, so I found this kind of uh, Eastern philosophies, yoga, meditation. So I, I decided to try, especially meditation, you know, this Zen meditation, mindfulness, uh, this is going on in the Western world, we have this New Age movement. So I tried, even though it's not such a powerful process, but still you get some benefit, you try to stop your mind, you sit peacefully, and immediately I, I, I saw some benefit from, from doing so. And after a little while, I, I, I really kind of got at least a mental kind of realization that I'm, I'm not this gross material body, and I'm also not this thinking process, which is going on like a, a monkey jumping through different branches. But there is something behind all this. You know? There is something, the obs an observer, which is above the material elements. And uh, um, <coughs> And the next point for, from the verse, very important, uh, Prabhupada explains that the living entity is servant in his constitutional position, is our true nature, the Dharma of the spirit soul. And even in the material world, uh, we, uh, we are always servants, even though we are thinking that we are masters and controllers, illusion by mind. So we are servants of wife, children, society, community, or even if we don't have all these things, we're serving all our senses. And uh, we can find uh, a very nice example of this. There's the rich and powerful guy who has a lot of possessions, money, maybe he's aristocratic or a king, powerful administrator. And, uh, but when he comes home, there's his dog. <coughs> so the dog has to go out to do his needs. So he goes behind with the dog. I don't know if you are in India, but in the West we have this kind of uh, plastic bags take it and uh, clean, clean it uh, behind the dog, whatever he does. So the rich and powerful guy, he goes around and cleans. <laughs> so this is, this is the illusion and this is our true nature that we're service. So service in the material world is a reflection actually of the, the true service that exists in the spiritual world between the, the Lord and the living entities, an eternal process. But uh, so in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 2.20, we find the famous verse which says, Jivaras Parupahai, Uchnara Nityadas, who is the most servant, eternally serving Krishna in our position. And uh, in the verse also there is Svarupena, material existence, Maya by me. And, uh, the Lord also, Prabhupada says in the verse, is Svara, fully independent. So as uh, we are at the, at the same. We have the same quality as him. So if we associate with the Lord, we are also svarat, fully independent by him. In the same verse, we find Krishnera tasta sakti shakti lela lela prakash. In quality, we are one with the Lord. And uh, but when we're conditioned, we're forced to act under the most material nature, being illusioned and so many complexities and, 
and so on. The highest form of service is expressed in Bhakti Yoga, which we find in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 1.1.12, Sarvupadi Mira Muktam, Tatparatvaram Irmaram, Trishikena Trishikesha Sevanam, Bhakti Duchete. Bhakti or devotional service means engaging our senses in the service of the Supreme Lord. And there are two side effects to this. One is uh, free, one gets free from material designations and uh, his senses are being purified simply by being employed in the service of the Lord. So if one executes his duty properly in this life and he will remember for sure the Lord at the time of death, as we find in the verse 2.16 2 of the Bhagavatam, Eta van Sankhya Yoga Vyam, Svadharma Parinishtaya, Charma Lava Parafum Sam, Antena Ema Expected. As perfection of human life is achieved either by a complete knowledge of matter and spirit, of practice of mystic powers, or discharge, perfect discharge for occupation of duty, to remember the Lord at the end of life. This is how we, we can attain our Swaru and engage in a loving devotional service to the Lord perpetually. So, Prabhupada showed us. Uh, Practically, how to uh, how to do this? How to be servants and engage in the loving service of Krishna? He established many uh, engagements, life events, festivals like Ratha Yatra, Food for Life programs, and uh, he taught us that we have to show by our example to the world that this serving Krishna, this service attitude, gives the the highest happiness and satisfaction. And, uh, so we have to engage in this kind of activities, high nouns, salon distribution, whatever is there, so many things. And people will be attracted because behavior speaks higher than philosophy. This is very important for the people, they perceive the happiness and the, uh, the joy that we have. So we, they, they, got, they get attracted by this. So we have to know the philosophy, we have to study and preach it, but we also have to walk the talk, I would say. And the people will be attracted and come join. This is how I got attracted actually. Some years ago, when I was traveling with my friend, we went to Florence in Italy. It's a very nice city. We were just traveling like hippies, complete junkies. And uh, we were roaming around the city at that time, it was summer. And uh, out of a sudden, came out from the from the corner, the Hare Krishnas came out. They were like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Brahmachari is jumping and dancing in ecstasy. When I saw them, when I said, wow, these people are amazing. Just, I got attracted immediately, you know, by the purity, by the very nice appearance, by the mantras. And immediately when Brahmachari came to us, he handed us a book for a small donation, he gave us some pocket money. And uh, he gave us a leaflet for the temple, and we were like, this is what we need, so we went to the temple. And that's another story. So, there's also another very nice story which exemplifies this. You know Goranga Prabhu, Radhanam Maharaj, very, very famous Brahmacharya. So, when he was in Golden, he had this experience that Radhanam Maharaj gave him this service that he has to brush one donkey every day. He was like, what? Why should I burn to donkey? No, it's a useless animal. No one uh, respects a donkey like this. And he was like, no, don't, don't worry, you do this service. You brush it every morning nicely, pet it. He was like, okay, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. So he started doing it. And, uh, but still, he was, his intelligence wasn't satisfied. He was a reluctant kind of. But then, after some time, he got the realization because they, they do many yoga retreats, many people are coming there, groups, and so on. So, this particular group of people, they were fascinated by this, by this treatment of the donkey. They said that they ne they've never seen such a treat treatment of animals anywhere in India, or they've been around the world also. So they, they became very, uh, very pleased with this. And they started coming year after year. They, they're still coming there. So this is an example of the power of service, how people get attracted. So now, now the next point, the last point of, of the verse, Prabhupada explains about uh, Vigyanics, which 
we bring to them to the point of liberation because <coughs> they also get one realization and uh, that's all right with us we are okay but uh, they say that's that's the, that's the end but we don't agree with this we know that that's the beginning actually such a, a transcendental pleasurable process of service to the law so this, this realization is just partial and because they don't have the information of uh, the transcendental loving service of the Lord, they, as Prabhupada says in the in the text, it's, it's very nice, a very nice, a very very much like this word. They should have been thought of service because they don't have this information, and because they want to be controllers and enjoyers, because they are still conditioned by mind. They say it's all one, we are all gods, all these kind of personal conceptions merge, merge into Brahman and so on. So <clears throat> the Maya bodies, they are worse than the atheists from one point because uh, they are defenders of the lotus feet of the Lord. So basically they are climbing up to hell. And then we have also the Brahman bodies who are respectful, who get the spiritual realization in Brahman, merging, merging in Brahman. But Actually, from, for the devotee, that's also not nice because it's a spiritual suicide. And uh, by the nature, the nature of the uh, of the soul is to be active and to desire. So it means that they have to come back down again at one point. And uh, the devotees are actually so exalted that they don't desire anything else but the devotional service of the Lord. And we find in the verse 329:13. Pure devotee of the Lord does not accept any kind of liberation. Salokya, Sarkasamikya, or Ekatva, even though they are offered by the Lord. He just desires perpetual loving service, birth after birth, even if he is to go to hell. And uh, one can get true freedom from material bondage by engaging in the, this kind of service. Uh, unconditionally and perpetually, as we find the statement in the verse 126 in Bhagavatam. Sabai uh, kumsam paro dharmo, yato bhakti adoksha je, ahaitu kya pratihata, dea masu pasiviti. The highest occupation dharma, for all humanity, is that by which men can attain to God in devotional service. The Lord. Such uh, devotional service must be unmotivated and anti and uninterrupted to completely satisfy itself. So these impersonal uh, conceptions, which we find they influenced a lot the modern uh, uh, community of people, the modern society, we, in, especially in the West, we can find these Mayavads and Buddhists, uh, they, they have influenced in such a way that people are becoming even themselves very uh, impersonal, very cold, they, uh, they're very unhappy, that's the result. The society is becoming more unhappy, there is a great suicide rate, <coughs> youth is getting frustrated, taking up artificial kind of lifestyles, drugs, uh, anarchism is prominent, crime, vandalism, so many things are going on. And uh, also, People are so atheistic, especially in the, the Western countries like Norway, where most of the people who is living, uh, Amsterdam, all these kind of people are very, very impersonal. It's very, very difficult to preach to them. Like, they are like stone, stone hard, literally. And basically, this modern society, everyone is glad by, by following the, the standards of it, everyone is climbing down to hell. It's a factory for hellish life. This is Kali Yuk. So, Prabhupada was very strong in holding, crushing these Mayavadis and uh, impersonalists, Shumyavadis, Bodhists, and so on. Because they are misguiding the innocent people into this kind of uh, very detrimental lifestyles and artificial concepts. So, we must follow what Prabhupada said and uh, preach against them. This was his prime, uh, prime mission of Prabhupada. In fact, we find 
Ugrinžiais Param Mantra Ir jūs šešia šunyje vadį Mas čia tėdė šitą arimą Ir constantly reminded Constantly every day when you go to the temple When you go to complacencies You say the mantra We are constantly reminded of the whole mission Drive out in personalism and bodies And reach to the Maya bodies So uh, We must fight against These uh, Maya bodies Against the conditioned people and uh, with great eagerness and uh, never stopping, never holding back in uh, every circumstance, doesn't mean summer, winter, every, every uh, condition is, is good for preaching. And also we know that Prabhupada wanted us to distribute his literature, his books, this is his main, uh, his main instruction also to his disciples. Uh, we know from Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj, he gave him this instruction. He also said, this is like the Brihatam Ritam. By distributing these books, they will change and influence so much society. One book just by entering a home or just by being, uh, just one holding it or seeing it or reading a, 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 a little sentence from it, to get so much benefit. And also he wanted us to contribute with, with our own literature, to flood the, the shops and the libraries, so people can get this basic understanding, ABC of spiritual knowledge, that uh, this material life is not their benefit. So this endeavor will drive away impersonal conceptions and uh, the Maya bodies and establish the Bhagavata Dharma and the Varnashrama Dharma, which was another part of his mission. For a, pros more for a prosperous world, in which there will be no longer competition, greedy really competition over material requirements and position, but uh, a sane and peaceful society engaged in the superior devotion of service, united under one cause, to advance spiritually and go back home, back to God. There are some questions, feedbacks, uh, comments, chastisements. Please don't hesitate. Verse chapter, like we, we found that uh, Lord Brahma, he meditated to the Lord, then at once he, he got to Darshan, and uh, then Brahma, he was amazed by the Lord, he, he started offering prayers to the Lord, and uh, then at once the Lord, he started responding to these prayers, and this basically these few uh, Start, started speaking since a few verses back and he's giving him benedictions per se this is how it goes you want something more specific? I don't know so this is, this is really yeah, the Lord is giving him benedictions and he also he, he told him now here that so uh, does the Krishna appear or the Lord is <coughs> <coughs> sorry Yeah. And then he's giving, he's telling him, don't worry, execute your duties properly, you won't be affected by them.